Hello, my name is Rick and welcome to my bathroom. On this channel, I like to review skincare products from a biological, psychological, and cost-effective perspective, so if that appeals to you in any way, I would recommend subscribing below and following me on my Instagram at rickskin underscore. So this video is going to be kind of different from the ones I usually do. Usually I do like a full product line review where I go over each active ingredient and describe what the product and those ingredients can do for you, but I just wanted to get a little chill, you know what I mean? So this is gonna be a little bit more of a casual video. I essentially just placed an order on Soko Glam. I went through like every single brand they have and just looked at what products they had to offer. Uh, some that I didn't usually see reviewed or didn't see any review for at all. And I just ordered those products and now I am going to try them. Some of these products I have tried like over the past couple days because I just didn't want to like unload a bunch of new product on my face so that I can get like irritated. <laughs> but yeah, some of these I've used one or two times, but my reactions are still kind of new because I'm kind of discovering what I like and don't like about them every time I use them. Some of them I haven't used, so I'm actually pretty excited for those. One thing you're going to see that's different about some of these products is that they contain fragrance. And you know, as much as I like to say, like, fragrance isn't needed, it doesn't serve any purpose, um, I realize that skincare is also kind of a sensory experience. It is in that kind of self-care category where it's, you essentially do what makes you feel good. And sometimes you just want to, like, have fun, you know what I mean? So yeah, I essentially just kind of bought myself, like, a new routine, and I'm going to try them all in, like, the same step you would usually do a skincare routine. And as I try them, I'm going to talk about the texture, my immediate first impressions, and some of the ingredients they have that I know, which is kind of why I chose them. Okay, so first, because y'all think this is a game, I got this on Soko Glam. I didn't know how to put it on, but I figured it out. Right. And I'm basically going to start with a cleanse. I already did my skincare already, so I cleanse today, but I gotta cleanse again for this. And I'm just going to use the cleanser that I always use. It's the Crave Beauty Matcha Hemp hydrating cleanser. It's pretty much my go-to if I want to cleanse but like don't want to strip or anything or I'm not wearing anything that really needs a powerful cleanser to remove it. First I'll wet my face, please. <laughs> First I'll wet my face, wait, 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 okay. And I didn't purchase this for it, like this isn't part of it, like I just didn't buy a cleanser in my Soko Glam order. So I'm basically fulfilling this stuff with this, which is what I already had. But I did put some moisturizer on today, so I do want to remove that so I can give these products an adequate chance and kind of a really baseline experience, like how I would use them if I was doing them during my normal routine, because I'm filming in the middle of the day, but I usually do most of my skincare at night. I'll only really do skincare in the morning if I'm showering. But if I'm like not showering in the morning, the only thing I'll do is probably put a moisturizer on and an SPF. So this is a little unorthodox kind of doing my skincare like in the middle of the day. <laughs> okay. So the first product I have is the Benton Aloe Real Cool Soothing Gel. The reason why I wanted to try this one was because oh, I always see like James Welsh talk about the Nature Republic one, that's essentially the same thing. The only reason why I didn't want to try that one was because it has a high alcohol content and fragrance. And since I have really dry skin, I don't really like using things with a high concentration of alcohol. And this is missing both of those. It has a few plant extracts, some that can be considered fragrance, but it doesn't immediately have a fragrance if you were to like actually use it. And then this has some humectants, it has glycerin in it, has one tooth hexanediol and pentylene glycol, which are kind of penetration enhancers slash humectants slash solvents. And then this has 93% aloe in it, so that's the active content of aloe you actually have in this aloe gel. And it's kind of like it's wiggly, see? I love I love textures like this. That's why I hate that I have dry skin. Because everything like this is like too light for me. 
And it feels like you're putting hair gel on your face if you wanted like a texture comparison. And they call it cooling, but there's nothing in it that kind of like actively cools. But it does make a cool humectant serum in place of like a hyaluronic acid or something like that. Because aloe itself can is a humectant as well. And the thing about this is like I like using a lot too, like see it because I like to feel adequately if something isn't occlusive if something isn't occlusive enough for me like I end up just putting like a shit ton of it on to kind of imitate that feeling that the product is kind of more integral because my dry skin just like needs emollient and occlusivity but yeah first impression of this it doesn't necessarily feel cooling. I think the only cooling I effect I feel is the fact that like, because my face is wet and there's wind hitting it, you know, like right after you get out of the pool, like because you're wet, like you really feel like how cold it is. I feel like that's the feeling I have right now. But my skin does, oh wow. My skin does feel like very adequately hydrated. And there's a little bit of smoothing going on too, which I wasn't expecting because there's like no oil or silicones in this. But it feels nice. And for $8, you get 300 milliliters or 10 ounces of this. This is gonna last you forever. So I'd probably say this is a better summer product than a winter product, but like, I just wanted to try one of these aloe products in a tub just cause I like, I don't know, I love gel textures. And this just looks, I don't know, I saw something, I saw the Nature of Public one, and I knew it wasn't for me, but then I saw this and I was like, ooh. So, that's Benton. <laughs> Alright, so the next product I have is the Botanic Farm Avocado Honey Rich Toner. The reason why I wanted this was because I really wanted to try something like Cream Skin or something. I thought this was going to be similar to that, and I have tried this once before already. It has 100 ppm of avocado oil and 1000 ppm of avocado fruit oil. That's almost like nothing. Like if you convert these ppm's to percent, it's like under 1% or under half a percent of those active ingredients in this. And I figured that out because right when I opened it, it was really thin and kind of see-through. So I knew there wasn't a high concentration of the avocado oil or like the honey in it, which I was kind of disappointed by. There's also a lot of fragrance in this. So this already kind of didn't live up to my expectations, but I'm gonna, just gonna kind of remind myself of the texture of it. It is a little opaque and it's kind of thick a little bit, but I've also been trying the cream skin because I'm gonna be doing a Laneige review. I got some of their products from, they have like a gift set on sale. So I got that. Cause I always see like cream skin and stuff like that. And I thought this would be kind of like a cool alternative because all cream skin is, is it's like, it's a toner with a crap load of meadow foam seed oil in it. It's just like a really thin emulsion. So I wanted to see if like, it was kind of easily that recreatable. And honestly, I haven't really tried anything else similar to that. This actually has a long ingredient list. It has glycerin, almus davidiana root extract, amaranthus caldatus seam extract, fig extract, honey extract, argan extract, avocado extract, avocado oil, hydrogenated castor oil. It's got some dimethicone, so there's silicones in it, cholesterol, fragrance, ceramide, NP, but it's pretty low down the ingredient list. Yeah, and you're gonna see I'm applying a lot of this, and that's because I usually apply toners kind of multiple times. Oh, it's also $19.20. It was on sale. That was another reason why I got it. And you get... They don't, oh, 170 milliliters. I'm not sure what that is in ounces because I am American. It's 5.7 ounces, so like almost six ounces. For the money, I'd say it's good. The only way I'd probably say that you, they could improve this product is probably a higher concentration of avocado oil or maybe instead of argan extract, maybe argan oil, just to make it kind of, 
just to make it, you know, they call it an avocado honey ridge toner, but it doesn't feel that rich. It just kind of feels like... I don't know, now that I've tried Cream Skin, I feel like there's kind of no other product on the market like that, and th th this could have been. This could have been a contender for that. They just needed to increase the amount of oil in this. Only by a little bit, too. They didn't need, need that much. But, um... Oh, and if they took this fragrance out, the fragrance is kind of prominent in this, and I'm not used to products with fragrance, so even for me, it's even more kind of intrusive. But if you're used to fragrance, I can see people liking this, especially for winter, maybe if you're combo or dry skin. I wouldn't say it's a horrible product, but if you're trying to miss fragrance or silicones or anything like that, I'd say just, I probably just wouldn't get this, based off first impression. <laughs> All right, the next product is the Apo or Apu. It's their glycolic acid cream, and on the label it says it has 3% glycolic acid, 0.45% salicylic acid, 30% betula alba juice. The reason why I got this was because the idea of exfoliating acids in a cream and not a serum or an essence speaks to me as somebody with dry skin as we go into the winter time. I also like the idea of a leave-on cream uh, being the vehicle for these exfoliating acids. Not that like a serum or an essence isn't leave on, but I just feel like a cream is kind of more integral and it'll give it more time for the exfoliating acids to do their job. So, and plus you don't usually see a lot of exfoliating acid creams. So I just really wanted to try this. I wanted to see how hydrating it was to see if it would buffer the irritation from the acids. So let's give it a whirl. And I didn't use this one yet, actually. So this is going to be like my first, first impression. I'm a little worried because I used that toner with fragrance in it. Uh, oh, oh, this is thicker than I thought it would be. Wow. I'm not actually sure how much of this I'm going to need to use either. And this was $17 for 50 milliliters. Or, oh, for my fellow Americans, 1.7 ounces. And this feels very silicone-y, like it has a really great slit. Um, for my big ass face, I'm probably going to need more product. It doesn't sting immediately upon application. 3% glycolic acid isn't that high of a concentration, if I'm honest. And 0.45 salicylic acid is really nothing to like go crazy for either. But I can see this being useful for people maybe with eczema or maybe if you have really sensitive skin but you really want to see the benefits of exfoliating acids, having something in a hydrating emollient base like this and with a lower concentration could be very beneficial to you. Yeah, and it's not, it feels heavy going on but then if you touch your face it's not actually that occlusive so I actually think that really any skin type can use this. It has kind of a long ingredients. I have it pulled up here just so you can get like a little bit of an idea. The first product is Betula Alba juice. If you didn't know what Betula Alba was, it's birch and you'll see like birch sap and stuff like that used in a lot of K-beauty products now. So Betula Alba juice is the first ingredient in this. And then glycolic acid, it's at 3%. So you know anything after that's going to be under 3%. It has niacinamide, glycerin, dimethicone. So there is a high concentration of dimethicone in this, which gives it its texture. Panthenol, salicylic acid, lactobacillus, pumpkin ferment extract. So there is some probiotics in here. It has pineapple extract, which is also an exfoliating component in this. Kiwi fruit extract, apple extract, and wintergreen. So there is some kind of like fragrant ingredients in this if you're worried. Um, I don't know the pH of this, but seeing niacinamide in here is a little bit worrisome because I always talk about niacin flush, which is what happens when niacinamide is exposed to low pHs. Sometimes it forms a little bit of niacin, which can cause niacin flush, which is basically a reddening of the skin, which isn't immediately damaging, but Cosmetically, it's not the most desirable, but in well-formulated products, it's usually something they account for, so it's not necessarily something you need to worry about. But I honestly love the texture of this, and if it can slowly kind of allow me to use the glycolic acid to exfoliate my skin, I may have just become a fan of this. <laughs> 
Um, the thing about me is that I've been on Accutane, so my skin already turns over really fast. So I'm not someone that usually needs to. Um, so I'm not usually someone that needs to take advantage of exfoliating acids. But sometimes my face does become kind of dull, so I'd like to use them. So this is a great alternative for if you have gone on Accutane or you just naturally have skin that turns over very fast. This is a great kind of gentle exfoliating method. Okay, this next product is from a product line I've been wanting to try ever since Michelle Fawn did her Harper's Bazaar skincare or let's go to bed with me thing. She used the Etude House Moist Full Collagen Sleeping Pack. I didn't want that because alcohol was high on the ingredient list once again. As someone with dry skin, I just didn't feel like I'd agree with that product. So I got their Moist Full Collagen Cream. It has alcohol, but it's significantly lower on the ingredient list. And honestly, I like the packaging. I like this. This is like one of my favorite colors. Like I know there's like, it's a gradient, so there's a bunch of colors in it, but like this kind of like rosy, orangey, light pastelish color is really pretty and the color of the cream is really pretty too but I've already tried this actually and I don't know it's kind of a miss for me it's highly fragrant it is highly fragrant which I don't like and I actually found myself smelling it like hours after I applied it which I don't like if there's going to be fragrance in a product I want to smell it immediately and then have it go away I don't want it to linger because then it just gets annoying you know what I mean it's also a very light moisturizer if you have dry skin I can see that you'd probably love this our combination skin because it's not like it's so light that it won't provide any occlusivity but if you have dry skin, I'm just already going to say that this probably isn't for you because I have dry skin and it's not enough for me. It's a pretty good deal. It's $20 for 2.53 ounces or 75 milliliters, so it's going to last you kind of a while. And $20 isn't a bad price for that amount of product at all. Wee -woo, wee -woo. And honestly, on top of this, the combination is actually pretty great because this has like the dimethicone and a lot of occlusive ingredients in it. And then like kind of putting this on top just kind of provides like that emollience and that kind of like extra hydration and occlusivity. Together my skin texture actually feels really good. Like that's a pretty good combination. I and mean, I ordered all of these by chance. Like <laughs> I just looked through each brand and was like, this looks cool. And then I ordered it. <laughs> In terms of if I like it, like upon first impression, it's an alright cream. If you have dry skin or a combination skin, this is the perfect texture for you. If you don't like fragrance, do not get this. It is very highly fragranced, like too much in my opinion. I'm not going to repurchase this, but um, $20 for 2.53 ounces is a pretty good deal. Um, other than that, the active ingredient is collagen. I mean, obviously the line is called Moistful Collagen. It also has glycerin, boab boab fruit oil, has kaolin in it that's also kind of like a drying agent it's a clay has dimethicone in it that's pretty much it there's not really that many actives in this you know i'm already just gonna say it, like just don't get this <laughs> um there's not a lot of actives in it i feel like with this the emphasis was more so on the experience the texture the fragrance and that's not so and that's not something i usually advocate for um, I'm obviously going to use it until it finishes, but I'm not going to recommend this even though it's $20 for 2.53 ounces Like I don't feel like you're getting enough actives and usually if something doesn't have a lot of actives I recommend it for sensitive skin, but since this has so much dimethicone Which scientifically hasn't been proven to like, cause acne or anything like that some people just don't like the feeling and The fact that it does have so much fragrance. I can't recommend it for sensitive skin either so just all in all, I wouldn't recommend it. If I was going to say the two kind of products that I was really liking from this, I would say the Aloe Real Cool Soothing Gel, $8 for 10.14 fluid ounces, and the Apu, Apo Glycolic Acid Cream. This is a great intro exfoliating product, great for dry skin for winter, great for sensitive skin if you want to try exfoliating acids. Um, yeah, I'm actually kind of impressed with this. Honestly, all these products do that together kind of formed like a really good kind of like protective barrier. And like, I like the way my skin feels and the way it looks too. Um, oh, this was $5 by the way. And like, it kind of doesn't fit because my head is fucking huge. But um, 
It's cute though. So yeah, that's gonna be this video. I wanted to do something kind of more casual because I've been so busy lately and I've kind of the idea of like researching ingredients for like a full product line review has been kind of like daunting to me. So I really just wanted to use this as an opportunity to kind of like reintroduce myself to filming because I have not been filming as much as I should. I like doing it. It's just like I have so much like extra shit going on in my life right now. It's kind of hard to like sit down and like dedicate myself to this, but this was fun. I like this kind of casual video where I just get like get to talk new products and like kind of fill people in on some stuff that I'm trying and how I immediately feel about it. And I hope you liked it too. I hope I gave you some insight into some products that I don't usually see reviewed or haven't found a review for at all. If you'd like to see like a full, like in-depth, like every active ingredient review of one of these products, let me know. I'll, I can do like a brand review for these some of these products. But yeah, if you like this video, I'd recommend subscribing below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to see some texture shots, some mini reviews, announcements for this YouTube channel, I'd recommend following me on Instagram at rickskin underscore. And I hope you liked this video, and I'd love to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.